Good morning, my beloved. My name is Mizaza Amon Hotel. I am the Ancient of Days, voice of the Most High. The Bible declares that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Therefore, we are other than ourselves. We are other than what God intended at our creation. Now, how do we overcome our conditioning? We overcome our conditioning by a process known in the scriptures as the renewal of your mind. The renewal of your mind is the most important process mentioned in the scripture. A man is as he thinketh. And so therefore we must Make sure that what we think is in accordance with the will of God. Let the meditations of my heart and of my mind be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. This is our, our prayer and our request. To be one with the Father, which were, we were created to be. And this should be our innate and God-given ability. But we have been hindered, so to speak, in our Christ consciousness, our development into into God's, into oneness with the Father. And believe it or not, we are hindered by the archetype, the construct of Jesus. Jesus is reported to be our our Savior and our Redeemer. He is a a Johnny come lately. He is not the the archetype or the prototype of salvation of old. Not for the original people. We were brought here to North America. And we were stripped of our ancient knowledge and spirituality. Our elders were, were killed. They were destroyed. Lest they assimilate and teach the old wisdom and the old way of God. We are Egyptians. We are of the Egyptian spirituality and belief system, which predates Christianity by perhaps thousands of years, thousands. And so when you truly examine Jesus, you find that Jesus is a fabrication of an old construct, of an old reality that the children of God, we, us, create. And so, why, why Jesus? I am told, whether it be true or not, that one of the ships that that they brought the slaves on was named Jesus. 
Jesus was the ship that took them from the familiar to the unfamiliar, the wilderness of, of North America. Now, the old gods were archetypes. Archetypes that exist within us. This is key here. They are processes of spiritual maturity. And so is Jesus. So is the construct of Jesus. But what we must realize is that <clears throat> life and death is in the power of the tongue. We have the same ability that God himself has. We are children of the Most High. We are taught that God spoke creation into existence. And therefore, we must govern what we speak. We have the same power. And so once the construct of Jesus was given unto us, we bought it hook, line, and sinker because it was an adaptation of our old belief system. It resonated with us because of our knowledge of our old system of thoughts and belief. But Jesus was not an 100% grasp, so to speak, of our old construct of spirituality, but a new. He was 99% and not a hundred. And this is why Jesus, the construct of Jesus, must be overcome. The Bible says that the servant is no greater than his master. But he that is perfect shall be as his master. Our master is our creator who breathed within our earthly vessel of his own spirit and man became a living soul. So our calling is not that of Jesus, which is limited. If that's all you espouse to is the power of Jesus. Jesus himself said, the works that I do shall you do. And greater works than these shall you do it. And we say, well, how can a man do something greater than the Son of God? That's because we see ourselves as separate from the Father rather than one with the Father. The scripture clearly declares that we are the temple of God. God dwells in us. And so if God dwells with in us, then we also have unlimited abilities and power. But in order to access these abilities, there are laws, there are means by which we must conduct ourselves in order to realize the fullness of our potential. God has no name. To define something is to encapsulate it. Therefore, you are in control of it. You have mastered it. You have defined it. And therefore, you have control by way of master. God cannot be mastered. He is almighty. 
He is inconceivable. He cannot be defined, merely imagined. And so we must re-embrace that which is unlimited in power rather than that which is, which is Jesus. Well, why, you say, has Jesus worked? Jesus has worked based upon our God-given powers and ability. The ability to speak and to create that which you pronounce from your being, from your thought process. Everything begins as a thought. And so we have empowered Jesus with thought, with combined and collective thought. And this is why Jesus works. But Jesus is limited. Our calling is, is to be one with the Father. Not a subordinate to the Father. But to realize our complete and God-given oneness with the Father. See, we view ourselves because of these these earthen vessels that, that we live in, these bodies, these cocoons that I refer to, because we have the ability to overcome this flesh. We exist, we are spiritual beings in physical bodies, having a physical experience. But that which is physical is temporary. That which is spiritual is eternal and everlasting. And this, the spiritual construct, is what we must develop and what we must realize is one with the Father. And therefore, we need no intercessor, an intermediary. The scriptures declares that you do, but you don't. You must separate yourself from that which is limited and embrace that which is unlimited. And that which is unlimited is the realization that you are. And that you are a member of the I am Tribe 